is up guys? Fa here from Mazdudes.com. So uh, the other day I was bored, I did not know what to do and I was browsing a little bit and what I saw is the world's hardest game which is this one that you see on the screen. Now I found that online, I was inspired by it and I wanted to create a game to see if it actually is the world's hardest game. So this is what I have here and if I hit the play button and uh, let's go and try to beat it. I'm just gonna do it once to show you that it's not the world's hardest game because I can beat it like, no, I cannot. Anyways, you get the point. This is what we are gonna do and it's really fun. It's simple to create, but there are a few tweaks as always that you can learn a few tricks and tips and whatnot. But anyways, I had a lot of fun creating this. It's a really cool game and we're gonna learn a lot and we're going to compete and try and beat the game. So let's see how you and I can actually create the world's hardest game using Unity Game Engine. Of course, you can download the assets and the complete project. Link will be in the description below. Smash the like, smash the subscribe and let's get started. All right, you know the drill. This is a new project, a 2D one because we're creating the world's hardest game. Aren't we not? Aren't we? Aren't we? I, I have issues talking. Anyways, I'm gonna go here in scenes and just change the name from sample to gameplay just because I cannot stand to see their sample scene. And we are going to import the assets. And for the assets, we only have the sprites. So I'm simply going to drag and drop that right here. And voila, we're good to go. You can download these sprites. Link will be in the description below along with this complete project. So moving forward, I'm simply going to go here into sprites and take the background and put it right here. And voila, this is our level and there you go. This is everything you need to create the game. So everything you literally need to create a game. Now, of course, I'm just kidding. We will need to add boundaries first because we want to not allow the ball. And let me just take the highlight tool. We don't want to allow the ball to pass through here or through here or here. So we want to strict it like this. And you get the point. This is what we want to do. So we want to strict, strict, strict it okay having issues talking and we are not going to allow it to go outside of these bounds which means here here and here and in order to do that we will need to create colliders so what I'm gonna do is right click under the background game object itself and create an empty game object and I'm going to call this one collider one now instead of me like resizing the colliders moving them left and right what I'm gonna do is simply here attach a box collider to the and I am going to resize it. So the size for this one on the X or actually the size, not the offset. So the X size is going to be 7.27 and the size Y is going to be 1.24. And the position X for this one is gonna be negative 0.55 and for the Y it's gonna be 3.088, voila. Now if I turn off the background, so turn off the sprite, this is where that collider is in the scene. You see, it's right here, there it is. Now, let me just turn it on. So it's right here. Let me clear the pencil. So it's here, not allowing the ball to pass through here and through here. So moving forward, I'm simply gonna duplicate this collider one and I'm going to rename it to collider two. And the size for this one is gonna stay the same, but the position for it is gonna be 0.0546 for the X axis, and for the Y axis is gonna be negative 3.107. Now, the best thing that you can do is the following. The best thing that you can do is download the project, and basically I need to move this a little bit here as well, so my position, my calculations were not that great. Anyways, it's here. The best thing that you can do is simply open the project that I have provided that you can download from the link below and simply copy these positions instead of watching me typing all of this right here. In fact, I'm gonna pause the video right here and paste all of these. So paste all of the positions and show you what I did and that's easy. You can do that on your own. So I'll be right back. Boom, I'm back. Did you miss me? Of course you did. Well, I have all of these colliders at place. So if I turn off the background, turn off the sprite render, you see I have all of them right here. 
and they basically are going to cover all of these sides. So okay? they, they are going to cover this and this right here, this right here, stuff, all of the stuff, <laughs> all of these things right here. So they're not going to allow the player to go outside of here. Now, this right here I did not cover. You can do that on your own. Basically, all of this you can do on your own, just adding colliders and moving them to cover these spots so that you don't allow the cube to go outside of those bounds. Simple as that, nothing complicated. Now for these bounce ball colliders, we're going to tag them here and also we're going to tag the goal collider. So I'm gonna go here and under tags and add tag, we're going to create one called bounce and we're going to create one, one, one called goal. So select the bounce colliders right here and we're going to tag them with the bounce tag. And for the goal ones, we're going to tag it with the goal. Simple as that. And now we can add our enemies and start moving them. So first of all, I'm gonna right click here and create an empty game object. And this is going to be our enemies, which is going to be the parent of the enemies. And I'm gonna right click on the transform and reset it just so that I can set it at zero, zero, zero and I'm gonna drag the first enemy and put it here. Now, of course you don't see, and I'm saying of course, like that happens all the time. Maybe you will see the enemy, maybe not. If you don't see it, the issue is in the order in layer because both the background and the enemy are on the same default sorting layer. So for the enemy, I'm gonna set the order in layer one and voila, here is our enemy. I can see it very clearly. So what I'm gonna do for the enemy is I'm gonna select it and attach a circle collider on it. And we also need to tag it with the enemy tag. So I'm gonna go here, tags, add tag and create a new one, enemy and hit enter and select the enemy and tag it with that enemy tag, simple as that. Now the collider for the enemy is going to be a trigger and voila, this is all we need for the enemy. Now, of course, this first enemy I'm going to well, first of all, let me just duplicate all of the enemies. We're going to have enemy one, this one's going to be two, three, and four. Three and four and five, actually. So yeah, the first enemy, I am going to position it for the X axis at negative 2.79. This is its initial position. The second enemy, so enemy number two, I'm gonna say X 2.8 and Y is gonna be 0.99. We are also going to have the third one. So let me select it. The X negative 2.79. The Y is gonna be 1.97. For the fourth enemy, let's set the X 2.8 and the Y is gonna be negative 1.005 something like this. And finally, we have the fifth one. So fifth enemy. So the X for the fifth enemy is gonna be negative 2.79 and the Y is going to be negative 2.004. So this is how we are going to position all of our enemies. Now, when it comes to the enemy, what we simply need to do is create a script. So right click in the folder in the assets and create a new folder for scripts. We are going to have only three scripts here. So I'm gonna go here under create and C sharp script. This one's going to be our enemy script. And we're going to attach it on all five of our enemies. So select all five of them, go under add component and filter enemy script. I'm going to double click it and open it here in Visual Studio and open it in whatever you're using, Notepad, I don't know, you can type the code in your, I don't know, in your book, wherever you type your code, okay? So what we are gonna do in the enemy script, first of all, we're going to have a public float, which is going to be move speed by default, I'm going to say it's equal to four, it's public, we can change it in the inspector panel later, no worries. We are also going to have a serialized field for a private bool move left. And simply what we are gonna do inside of our update function is we are going to move our enemies. So inside of the update, I'm gonna say if move left, we are going to move them to the left side by using vector three temporary position, which is equal to transform position, which is the current position of the enemy. 
Then we're gonna say temp x minus equals move speed multiplied with time dot delta time and simply transform position is equal to temp, simple as that. And below here we're going to have else where we are going to do the same thing but here we're going to say plus because if move left is not true that means we are going to move to the right side. Move left will indicate that we are moving to the left side and move right or actually if it's true we are going to move to the left if it's false we are going to move to the right. This is how it looks like if I run the game now but before that excuse me you see here we need to select these enemies and that's why I set the serialize field for the move left to be true. So enemy two and four, we're gonna say move left to be true because for enemy one, two, one, three, and five, they're gonna start moving to the right side. So if I hit the play button now, you will see that these three are moving here and these two are moving and they're gone. Now the reason why they are gone because we need to hit, we need to touch these bounce colliders so that we can change the direction. But you see these three enemies, they're going to start to see the ones that I'm turning on and off. They're going to move to the right side and enemy two and four, they're going to move to the left side. That's why this move left is public so that we can check it here. It's actually a serialized field, which means it's visible in the inspector panel. We can check it and indicate that they should move to the left side. But now in order to start moving them in the opposite side, we simply need to go here and we need to say void on trigger enter 2D and here I'm going to change the collision name to target and we're going to test if the target tag is equal to bounce and you have an assignment to fix this. When I say fix, I want you to write this more efficiently and you know what I mean because I probably did that in 3000 of my videos. If you did not learn that so far, then uh, yeah, good luck learning how to make games. <laughs> Anyways, if target tag is equal to bounce, what I'm gonna say here is move left is equal to the opposite of move left. What does this right here mean? Well, let's assume that the ball or the enemy that's holding this script is moving to the right side. When it touches the bounce collider, then the move left will equal would be equal to the opposite of move left. So if it's moving to the right side, move left currently is equal to false. But when we touch the bounce, it will say move left is equal to the opposite. What's opposite the false? It's true. And next time when we touch the bounce collider again, move left will be equal to the opposite. So it will be moving from true, false, true, false, from true to false and from false to true. So let's test that out and see if it actually works because we wrote the code. If I hit the play button now when they touch these, they should be moving, but bam, they're not. What the hell is wrong, teacher? You're teaching me wrong. I'm not going to follow your channel anymore. You have an unsubscribe for me. That's how most of you guys behave. And uh, I laugh at that. <laughs> Just a second. Let me explain. So what we forgot to do, well, not forgot, but I'm teaching you. If you want to detect collision in your code by using on trigger enter, on collision enter, the game objects also need to have a rigid body. At least one of the two game objects that participate in the collision needs to have a rigid body. So we can select either the bounce ball colliders or the enemies, but I'm going to select these two. So they need to have a rigid body. So we are going to go under add component and attach a rigid body collider. And simply I'm going to change the body type from dynamic to kinematic. Why? Because if I go here and turn off the sprite and if we, let me just do something like this and select these two colliders. If I don't set them to kinematic and I set them to dynamic, when we run the game, pay attention now, they're going to fall down. You see, they fell down. You see, this is not what we want. Now, the reason why we don't want this is because we don't want them to fall down. Simple as that. So when we say here kinematic, that means that this rigid body will not be affected by gravity. It will not be affected by gravity and it will not start to fall down. It will stay in one place. So when it's kinematic, gravity will not affect it. So now when I hit the play button, pay attention when the balls 
hit these walls. You see, bam, they are moving to the opposite side now. You see, bam, how everything is working in harmony and peace until you guys attack me in the comment section for something that I did not do. Anyways, <laughs> I'm just kidding. But anyway, you see how everything works and how everything everything is going. If you If something is not clear so far, just ask in the comment section or in the Facebook group. Moving forward, now that we have our enemies, I'm gonna go into sprites and add the player in our game. This is our player. He is the almighty player. He is the player. He is the player of the all players. The player, you get the point, he is the player. So what we're gonna do with the player, I'm gonna say his position X is 6.5, negative 6.5 that is. And I don't know, I can say negative 0.5 on the Y, it's not important. But what we're gonna do with the player is we're going to attach a box collider 2D on him. And we are also going to attach a rigid body, a rigid body 2D. I'm gonna make it dynamic, but I'm gonna say here gravity scale is equal to zero. And also for the constraints, I'm gonna freeze the Z axis because I don't want him to rotate. I don't want him to rotate like crazy. And also just to make sure that he will be always rendered on top of the background, let me select his order in layer and set the order in two. If you don't know, about these orders in layer and everything that's going on and what does that mean? I have a special uh, separate tutorial talking about order in layer, you should watch that. So I'm gonna select the player here and I'm gonna go under untagged and I'm going to set here tag to tag the player. And of course we need to go here in script, right click and create a C sharp script. And I'm going to call this one player script, very creative. What can I do? I'm a creative guy, I'm gonna select the player and drag and drop the player script here and double click it, open it in Visual Studio. Again, wherever you open it, just write the code. I don't care if it's a notepad, I don't care if it's terminal, wherever you write your code, man, I'm not judging. So what do we need in the player script? Well, we need a uh, public float move speed, which I am going to say it's equal to one and it's float, it's not flat float. So inside of our fixed update, I'm going to remove all this here. And I'm going to say here fixed update, not fixed join, but fixed update. Inside of the fixed update at the beginning, I'm going to say vector to temp is equal to transform position. And I know a lot of you are going to say now, okay, but what's the difference here? You said vector two, but here for the enemy, you said vector three. It's not important. Vector three is X, Y, and Z. Vector two is X and Y. This is a 2D game. What's important in a 2D game is X and Y. Even if we try to use Z, it will not work. So you can either use Vector2 or Vector3 in a 2D game. In a 3D game, you need to use Vector3 because you have X, Y, and Z axis, okay? Hope that will clear all things that you had. So inside of Vector2, or actually inside of the fixed update, we're gonna say if our input get axis, and I'm gonna say here horizontal axis, if the value is greater than zero, and I'm gonna duplicate this and here I'm gonna say else if input get axis horizontal is less than zero. So if it's greater than zero, I'm gonna say temp x plus equals, and I'm gonna say here move speed multiplied with time dot delta time. And here below, I'm simply gonna say move speed minus equals. And you know what this means? If we press the A key or the left arrow key, we are moving to the left side, which is the negative side. That means that horizontal axis is less than zero. If we press the D key or the right arrow key, we are moving to the right side. So we are saying plus equals because the right side is the positive side. And we're saying move speed multiplied with time dot delta time to smooth things out. Now I'm simply going to duplicate all of this here and I'm going to paste it. And instead of horizontal, it's going to be vertical. And here also it's going to be vertical. And here instead of X, it is going to be Y. And also here instead of X, it's going to be Y. And everything else is exactly the same. And the principle here is the same, except the axis is different. So when we press the up arrow key or the W key, we're gonna go up. If we press the S key or the down key, we're gonna go down. And when all of that is cleared, we're simply gonna say transform position is equal to, to, to temp to back it up to the temp value or whatever. I have issues talking in this tutorial. I don't know what's going on, but you get the point. Anyways, 
So what I did here is we're going to control our player. So if I go back here and if I hit the play button, pay attention now, the player is going to start moving when I start moving him. So you see, the player is moving, everything is working fine. I cannot go outside of these bounds. You see, I can go out of these bounds on the left side. So here, but that's not important. That's your job to fix it. But when you're playing your game and you know that that is an issue, you're not gonna do it. So here now we can start moving and we can start avoiding and trying to beat the world's hardest game. And let's say if you can actually do that. Oh, can you do it? Can you do it? Oh, no, no, I cannot. No, I cannot beat my own game. I mean, it's not my own game, but I'm creating it. Well, now what we need to do is go back here in Visual Studio and in void on trigger enter. So void on trigger enter, this is going to be our target. And here we're going to test if our target, so for the player script, if the target dot tag is equal to enemy, like this. And again, here we need to have also if target dot tag is equal to goal. So when we reach the goal or when we reach or when we touch the enemy, we're gonna die. So if we touch the enemy, we're gonna do what? We're simply gonna call our game manager dot instance dot player died like this. And if we touch the goal, we are gonna call game manager instance player reached goal. Now, as you can assume, we don't have a game manager, so we need to create one. So let's go back here in Unity. I'm gonna right click and go create a C Sharp script game manager. Ignore the error right there because we are using something that's not existing currently and I'm gonna call this one game manager. Reset the transform, so go here, reset, and I'm simply gonna attach the game manager script on it. Fix compile errors before that works. Interesting, I thought that I can do this, but let's go and fix the compile errors before, before we can do this. So let's try now. Game manager, attached, finally. I'm gonna go back here, and for the game manager, we need to make an instance, so it's gonna be public static game manager instance. In the awake function, we're gonna test if our instance is equal to null, then the instance is equal to this. Now, if this is shenanigans to you, if you don't understand what is going on, what the hell did I just do? You need to watch my tutorial about singletons and how to use them and why they are so powerful in Unity. And I have tutorials for that, so don't worry. I have a separate tutorial, half an hour, talking only about that. What we also need to have here? Well, we need here a public vector to, this is going to be our player initial position. And this is actually the player's initial position when we start the game. So if you select the player, you will see that his initial position is negative 6.5 for the X and, pa or, and negative 0 0.5 for the Y. So you're going to put here for the X negative 0, 0.65 and for the Y negative 0.5. So simply put those for the initial position of the player. And if I go back now here, what we also need is we need to get a reference to all enemies. So private game object array, this is going to be all enemies. And we also need a private game object. This is going to be our player. And inside of the start function, so here we're gonna get the references. So we're gonna say enemies is equal to game object find game objects with the tag enemy and it's gonna get us all the enemies or all game objects that have this tag which are our balls and we're also here gonna say player is equal to game object find with tag and why 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 are you killing me like this so it's game object capital G capital O find with tag and it's gonna be the player tag because we also need to get the player. And the reason for that is we will see in a moment. So here, I'm simply going to say public void player died like this. And when the player dies, we're gonna say time dot time scale is zero to stop the game. And then we're going to call a coroutine that we need to create. So here I am going to say I enumerator Enumer I enumerator, here it is, restart game like this. And since we are setting here the time scale to zero, we need to use yield return. So 
it's yield return new wait for seconds and we need to wait for seconds real time so wait for seconds real time and we're gonna wait for two seconds and then simply we're gonna call our unity engine dot scene management scene manager so scene manage unity engine scene management scene it's not unity editor it's unity engine dot scene management scene manager dot load scene but I'm gonna duplicate this or actually copy this. So load scene and we're gonna paste here scene manager. So again, Unity Engine scene management scene manager get active scene. We're gonna get the active scene dot name, which is gonna reload the current scene. And here simply I'm gonna say start coroutine and we're gonna call restart game like this and voila we're good to go but we only need to do one more thing and that is create our public void player reached goal when that happens we need to restart the game making the game harder which means the enemies are going to move faster but first of all our player dot transform that position is going to be equal to the player initial position we're going to reset the player's initial position and we're going to say player get component and we're gonna say player script and the move speed we're gonna increase it by 0.3f and below we are simply gonna say for each game object g in enemies we're gonna say g dot get component and it's gonna be the enemy script component that move speed we're gonna increase it by one now what is for each it's a for loop it's the same thing as if we say for int i is equal to zero, i is less than enemies dot length, i plus plus, and then doing here enemies and the enemy that's at index i dot get component, doing exactly the same thing that we are doing here. So these two are exactly the same, except for each is another way to iterate through an array, and for each is a little bit faster. So that is the difference. And in the player script now, we can uncomment these. So we can uncomment both of these and it will work. Now we have one more issue that we need to tackle and I'm going to show you that issue right now. And that is when we die. And again, I like to show you things like this. I like to make a mistake first and then show you how to fix it. So if I go here and try to run the game and if I go and try to be the world hardest game, if I die, pay attention what's gonna happen. I'm gonna die. You see the game is stopped, the game stopped. Now it's restarted, but I can't, you see the game is restarted as it's supposed to be because here you see, when we touch the enemy, I'm gonna call player died. When I call player died, I'm gonna say time scale is zero and restart the game, but time scale is still zero. That's why everything is not moving anymore. So what we need to do is we need to take this time scale and we need to go back here and set it back to one to reset it because this is really, really important every single time you use time scale and set it to zero. Make sure that you have a code somewhere that you will set or that it will set the time scale to one or otherwise you will have issues like the one that you just saw. If you use time scale zero and then your game is not working, everything is stopped, that's because you did not call time scale is equal to one because time scale controls the workflow of your game as you can see. So if I go back now and if I die, so if I hit the play button and if I die, so let's try to die right away so that we don't wait. Okay, bam. Now when we restart the game, I will be able to move. You see, everything is moving because time scale is back to one. Now let me just try once to beat the world's hardest game. Let's see if I'm the master. Let's see if I'm the pro. If I am the sensei. Can I do this? I don't believe I can. No, no, I cannot. You see, I cannot. I'm hoping that you can beat the game, but with these settings, don't try and set the player speed to five and then you will move so fast and stuff like that. No, try to beat it like this. Try to reach the goal and let me know if you can do it. Let me know that in the in the Facebook group. That would be really cool to see if... Oh, that... <laughs> 
Apparently, I'm not that good in the game that I created. And I'm not gonna try and beat the game again because it's really hard with these settings. Of course, you're gonna cheat and try to beat it and then you're gonna tell me, oh, I beat the game. But anyways, you know that you cheated. Anyways, guys, this was one of the shortest tutorials that I did in a while. I had fun creating this game. It is really simple, but it's... It truly is the world hardest game. Your assignment is to fix all those things in the code that I said during the video if you paid attention, but of course you didn't, <laughs> just kidding. And to implement the score, try to beat it when you reach the goal. So when you go and reach the goal, implement the score and count it how many times you reach the goal and Let's make a competition out of it so that you guys can post that in the group how many times you reach the goal with these settings and how many times how many times you actually beat the game, which is really fun. Anyways, thank you for watching. You can download the sprites and the complete project. Link will be in the description below or on awesometoons.com. And uh, yeah, smash the like, smash the subscribe, smash the notification button, and I will see you guys in another video.